This video is made possible by the following mad lads. All their awesome gear they supply to me can be checked out in the description below. Hey guys, TCR Boy here, and welcome back to Race Room for another video. As I'm sure a lot of you guys will know by the video I put up on my channel yesterday, last week I had the absolutely fantastic opportunity to go to Denmark and try out a real life Audi TCR touring car. And in the comments, I had a couple of people ask, you know, Jimmy, how realistic is the sim version now that you've driven the real life version? And it just so happens that we have the sim version in Race Room. This is essentially the exact same car that I drove in Denmark last week. So what I'm going to do in this video then is drive a race with this Audi TCR car and try and compare the two as I go. Now, unfortunately for us, the track that I drove last week was essentially just an airfield with some cones on it. So it's not really available in any sim. But of course, I have the next best thing here, Zolder. I'll also be using my VR headset in this video to try and bring it as close as I can to what it was like to actually drive this thing in real life. But yep, that's about the size of it, so let's go see how this sim version of the Audi RS3 TCL car compares to the real thing. Right then, so here I am back in the cockpit, this time virtually, of an Audi TCR car and everything in here looks pretty much the same, down to the pedals down at the bottom there, which is pretty damn crazy. Anyway, there go the lights. Oh, I was distracted there looking around the cockpit. Terrible start. A little bit of wheel spin there. Managed to stop it a little bit. But anyway, I get absolutely mugged off the line. I'll try and get a couple of places back down the T1. Throw it up the inside. Use the curb, but then just accelerate out. Oh, the guy on the right there gets all kinds of wrong into the gravel trap. And now I'll slow it back down. Third gear through this first right hand. A little bit of a stutter in the VR headset there. It's, oh, my word. The front tyres are not there yet. Absolutely just understeered through there. Not how you want to do things. Up to fifth gear temporarily, then on the brakes in a straight line if you can. Blend off as you come into the corner, then easy back on the power. Don't want to force it too much to front wheel drive. So easy to understeer in this thing. I can see Mr. Tom Coronel in my, uh, in my mirror there. I'm sure he's looking to follow me and then unfollow me on Twitter if I'm not careful. Oh, third gear through there. Really very difficult through that section in this car. You have to make sure you're turned in nice and early. You can't really adjust your line mid-corner in this. Fast left hand of the rear. You can see in the wheel there, it gets a little bit loose under heavy braking, so you've got to be careful in this thing. Now, through this right hand, we can go flat all the way up here along the line is right. I see a small lift there, because you can hear the car start to uh, wheel spin through there. Just losing a bit of traction. Heavy braking zone now can get hard on the brakes in this car. No ABS in this car, but you can really abuse the brakes. You've got the slick tyres, you can do it. A bit like a downforce car in the way you have to peel off the brake as you come into a heavy braking zone. Otherwise, the rear, the rear locks up and you go around, which is not ideal. Like chicane, downshift protection there coming to my aid. Easy, easy. And that's a lap already in our TCR car at Zolder. So, how does this thing compare to real life? And the, uh, I guess the answer is, is it's a lot closer than I thought it would be. Um, the main thing this car does very well is how nervous the rear can get under braking. Uh, the, the car I drove from real life felt as if, if I was too aggressive on the brakes or too aggressive through kind of a medium speed corner. The rear, wow, I just got, he went round the out. What? What grip is that? Cheating AI, Pogchamp. Anyway, um, it, it always felt in the car driven real life that the rear was very nervous and if I was pushing it too hard for a medium speed corner then it would break traction and I'd end up going round so you kind of get that you don't feel that the same way though in the real car you feel that through your arse you feel it through the seat of your pants so to speak but in this car and it's delivered that feeling is delivered through the steering wheel uh, the wheel doesn't jolt as uh, aggressively as it does in this game with the direct drive wheel in fact, it's actually quite pleasant. You'll see if I, when I'm driving, I'm actually very smooth on the wheel, because I can be, like, just cut across the nose there of the cheating AI. It gives me a flash in the mirrors. Screw you! That's what I say. But you do get that effect in the wheel, the way the wheel will just kind of pop back at you like that when you're having a little bit of a sideways moment. But that doesn't happen in real life. Well, I didn't, that didn't happen to me anyway. Also, the wheel gets quite heavy. It loads up quite a lot coming through the slow speed corners. It's, again, not really quite the same in, in real life. Uh, the car in real life had power steering. So it was very easy just to turn the wheel when you want. And you find when I'm doing this in sim, I tense my shoulders a lot more in sim than I do in real life. Because in real life, you can drive actually quite casually of the wheel. It's only when you start going very close or over the limit, you have to start making these little crazy adjustments like this. In real life, smooth is a lot more... Uh, it's a lot faster than in sim, I think. 
Easy through here. Sound, uh, it's a little bit muted, of course. It's very hard to... Very hard to get a... Uh, well, I guess a representative noise on board of a race car because... A lot of mics just get blown out by it. Oh, there you go. That's what I'm talking about. Rear end there coming round. I save it by hitting the throttle. I can tell you that happened to me as well. I, I had a little bit of a slide at one of the hairpins. And you just nail the throttle to bring it back round again. It's uh, very cool when you get that right. Easy. There you go. Smash it over the curbs. But uh, I don't feel any mechanical sympathy for this car. I think a lot of the stuff you feel in real life is to do with just like actually being in the car and being physically there, you know. It's, it's, it's kind of hard to explain in, in that aspect. I, I wouldn't have thrown this thing over curbs or anything like that because I'd be too scared to break it. But in the sim, that just is completely gone. You just don't give a shit. Just reset and get another one, huh? I haven't uh, messed up the clutch in this yet, so I guess we're doing okay. Even those little buttons down there, the, uh, the I that is that box is pretty much exactly the same in the real car. And uh, I, the uh, two switches in the top right of that box there are, are basically ignition and the starter. So I got to flick them off when we when we stopped. I felt like such a badass. Let me just turn off the car. Boop, boop. <laughs> oh my. You'd have a lot, of course, you have a lot more confidence in the sim than you ever would in real life, I think. Well, initially, anyway. It takes a bit of time to get used to the grip of a slick tyre in real life. And you have to always be careful of the, uh, of the rear tyres getting cold or starting to wear, etc. Because they are pretty much what dictate the, the mid-corner grip, it feels like, of the car. Front tyres, of course, still the heavy lifting. They give you the traction, the initial turn in, the steering. But if the rear tyres aren't there, it's like having a shopping trolley. And this thing is set up like that. When, uh, when, when these cars go through a corner quickly, the uh, inside rear wheel will often come off the ground. It's quicker to have the car rotate that way. That Hyundai. Oh, that's Tar... Ow! Oh, it's Tar Queenie! Just got absolutely mugged there. Easy down here. There you go. But I tell you what, the brakes as well uh, in the TZR car, they were decent, but I thought they'd be better. Like, um... They, uh, especially when they were cold, they were really very difficult to work. You have to really smash the brake and hold it and basically hope you'd stop a lot of the time. The most difficult part for braking, though, was definitely uh, at the end of the back straight. I'm referring a lot to the TCR video here, so if you want to go watch that, it might actually help you out a bit. But the back straight, the TCR video, the really fast bit, and then you had a little chicane into a kind of a long hairpin. You had to hit the brakes heavily, come off a little bit when you were turning, otherwise the rear end would start dancing around, and then get back on them again, and then blend off as you go through the right. It's, um... Yeah, it's... I, I found it a lot easier to pick up that car in real life than I do to find it to pick it up in the sim, I think. It's just a lot more feeling uh, in real life than you get from a sim. But, again, to give... to, you know, really give this thing some, uh... Some positive feedback, you know, this is... It's pretty much exactly the same as being in the cockpit. Everything feels very similar. When I look around, the spacing feels the same. All the buttons look the same. The buttons on the steering wheel are the same. This is all the same. It's it's kind of crazy, really. Sometimes I think you just get into a sim and think, oh, man, yeah, cool, it's an Audi, whatever. And you don't pay attention to all the stuff in the cockpit, but it is just all exactly the same. And for that, I've got to say kudos to, uh, to race room. And Sector 3 is like a big old biff from behind. That's a very touring car. Smash the throttle there to save it. I would have went round another car. Oh, it's Taquini! You want to go, mate? I will roll you. I'm going to just cut across his nose. I don't even care. Cut across his nose. Going to get the flash from him now, probably. Yeah, there's the flash. Fuck you! <laughs> Getting proper touring car now. We're on the last lap anyway, so I've got to try and defend this position. I'm in fifth. I'm up one from our starting place, despite uh, falling back a bit earlier on. Easy through here, blend off the brake. Oh, I just got on, just put too much energy there through the front tires and they did not want to stick, but luckily the guys behind are fighting, so he should be good to the line. One the last chicane to go through. Oh no, bit too hot into there. The rear again starting to come round, but you can save it on the power. But there you go, that was five laps in the Audi TCR car. And yeah, I've got to say, I haven't driven this car in racing before, and I'm, uh, after driving the real thing, I say I'm fairly impressed. It's, it's quite believable. Um, 
But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. I know a lot of it was quite rambly because I was trying to uh, think of how I was feeling driving the real car and then trying to relate it to this. So sorry if it was a little bit incoherent at times. But if you have any questions uh, about the real car or about how it compares to this one, then feel free to let me know in the comments and I'll try and answer it when I can. But yes, as always, guys, if you enjoyed the video, then make sure to hit that like button. If you really enjoyed it, hit subscribe to be notified of future videos like this and future streams. Might as well hit the bell icon as well, because that way you might actually be notified and YouTube will actually do its job. As always, a massive thank you to my patrons and to my sponsors. You guys keep this channel afloat. Take care, have an awesome day, and I'll see you all next time.